All right, let's go ahead and get started with this morning or this afternoon, depending on your uh, time zone, your webcast on integrating SAP business objects in Tableau. And the first order of business is if you dial the uh, access number on the screen to get audio rather than using your computer speakers, I may have given you an improper access code. So you might want to hang up and dial that 702 number again and then use the access code that you see on the screen at this point to get proper audio. I want to ask you also if you're dialing up to make sure that your phone is muted because in some cases we seem to have some folks contributing unknowingly to the webcast with their telephone. So two things if you're dialing up with the telephone and not using your computer audio, make sure you're using the current access code I have on the screen and then also just make sure that your uh, telephone is muted if you would be so kind. Good morning or good afternoon. My name is George Peck from the Ablaze Group. We're going to spend about a half hour or so uh, with a really interesting webcast, in my humble opinion, tying two very, very exciting leading-edge business intelligence tools together, SAP Business Objects and Tableau. So this is going to take about a half an hour. I want it to be as interactive as possible uh, as we go. If you have questions, use that questions panel in your GoToWebinar um, screen to toss your questions out there. And at the end of the webcast, I'll go pick all the questions up and we'll take those uh, and get them answered. Uh, another thing about the webcast today, and we mentioned that in some of the emails we sent out, we are going to uh, do a drawing for a, a $50 iTunes gift card at the end of the session. Actually, we'll probably do that a little bit later today after we pull down the attendance report. Uh, if you watch the entire webcast, we can tell. Uh, we'll toss you into a drawing for the gift card, and that is uh, for customers only. Vendors are not eligible for that drawing. So stick around for about a half hour or so, and you might be the lucky winner of that $50 iTunes gift card. So what am I going to cover today? It's going to be a short discussion uh, before a live demo. We always like to see things live, and I've got a, a good one lined up for you. But prior to that, it's just a short discussion on SAP business objects and Tableau positioning, uh, how they work with each other, how they each have their place in your organization, uh, and how you should consider actually uh, adding Tableau to your business intelligence offerings if you are currently an SAP business object shop, which I feel many of you are. That's where we were largely aiming the webcast today was to our customer base of existing SAP business objects organizations. After that short discussion, uh, the live demo, which is going to be very, very um intricate uh, in terms of integrating the two tools together and show you the different methods of doing it and how each can call the other. Uh, and it's a very, very nice demo that, that shows you a really good tight integration of the two tools. And then at the end of Q&A, get your questions answered. Uh, and this is all going to take place in about a half an hour. All right, so SAP Business Objects, we'll talk about that first. Uh, they, they seem to be on a stock photo kick. If you happen to catch one of my breakout sessions at the Business Objects User Conference in Orlando last month, you heard me rail against the, uh, <laughs> the stock photos they use. That's the, the image I have here behind uh, the slide is an SAP Business Object stock photo. So that's going to represent Business Objects this morning is the stock photo of the lady looking at the computer screen. SAP Business Objects, though, really is tried and true enterprise BI. Obviously, it's been around for a very long time. We've been involved with it through various permutations for a very long time, and it is a standard for organization-wide report scheduling and distribution. Uh, if you're using web intelligence, it's more of, a, again, kind of an uh, ad hoc analysis tool. But it's not a visualization tool uh, in, the, in the vein of Tableau. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, obviously, interactive drill down and navigation, large reports, uh, more standard report distribution uh, as PDFs or printing on printers. Uh, all the drill down capabilities in a crystal report and web intelligence, for example. So the ability to do multiple le levels of drill down and all the interactivity with the group tree in a crystal report and all those things that we've all come to know and love for all the years and years and years of, of using SAP business objects and the crystal tool set. So we know for the most part what that does. Uh, many of our organizations are, uh, you know, longtime users of that tool and have it in place. Tableau is a very different tool. It really is. It concentrates on visualization. It is not necessarily a reporting tool. It doesn't pretend to be a reporting tool. It doesn't pretend to be an enterprise-wide report distribution tool or kind of an ad hoc database tool or ad hoc analysis tool necessarily like what, like a web intelligence would be. It is visualization. It is very, very fast visualization. If you have not yet seen on our YouTube channel Build a Tableau Dashboard in One Minute, 
go take a look at it. It's uh, youtube.com slash ablazegroupbi. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but youtube.com slash ablazegroupbi. And I show you how to design a usable, um, actionable Tableau dashboard in 60 seconds. And I'm not kidding. So Tableau is very, very fast for doing leading-edge visualization. It enforces visualization best practices. Uh, it is a terrific tool, a leading-edge tool in this area of BI. With Tableau Server, you have a flexible web-based distribution and interactivity capability. So your visualizations can be viewed on any web browser. Uh, they're HTML5 compliant, so they can be viewed in a tablet. Uh, and there's full interactivity with them in the web. And we'll see that here in a minute. So they are two really different tools aimed at two different segments of the BI community. They are not necessarily competitive tools. Now, SAP is going to tell you that they have a complete suite and they have a full suite of BI tools, but it is not necessarily complete. They're trying to fill in this gap. How many of you have seen visual intelligence yet? If, again, you were at the Business Objects User Conference, you may have seen visual intelligence, which is an SAP I don't know that knockoff is the right word, but it's an attempt to take some of the functionality of Tableau and start to offer that as an SAP tool. It's like a cake that's come out of the oven that's not done. The toothpick is coming out of the middle wet with visual intelligence. We'll see what happens with it. Tableau is there now. This is a leading edge visualization tool that is mature. It's uh, at version 7 with another version coming here in another few months. Uh, we'll see more about that at a Tableau customer conference in San Diego here in about three weeks, and hopefully we can see some of you there as well. So. Not one or the other. These tools are not one or the other. They can work together, and they work very well together. Each tool has its place in your organization. SAP Business Objects, the tried and true report distribution, report automation, enterprise reporting, drill down uh, reporting, um, and that the things that we've talked about. That is its place, and it does it very, very well. As, uh, uh, Tableau visualization. Analytics, Rapid Fire BI, design dashboards in minutes, in an hours, not weeks and days. It really is a powerful tool, and the two tools complement each other. The standard reporting, the automation, the distribution is an SAP Business Objects tool set option. The visualization, the interactive visualization, the Rapid Fire BI is a Tableau function. Why not use them together to provide a well-rounded, best-of-breed BI system to your audience? They are a terrific combination of tools that work very, very well together, each with its own you know, niche and, and specialty. Put them together, and you really do have a full best-of-breed BI system for everybody in your organization. So that's kind of a quick positioning of the two tool sets. Uh, I, th I think you're going to agree that they actually do have different approaches, different functions, and if you can put them together, you really are going to have a really full, uh, full, function BI, full function BI system for your users. So let's get to the live demo at this point and take a look at it. We'll do uh, a live demo using two, two tool sets, both current releases. I'm going to be using SAP Crystal Server 2011 Feature Pack 3. So in essence, this is the Crystal Reports only version of BI4. So if you're a full BI4 shop, all of these things here are applicable to you. I just happen to be showing it to you on a Crystal Server 2011 FP3 system. But this is, in essence, BI4 FP3 SP4, the latest version. I'm also using Tableau Server 7, also the current release of the Tableau Server product. Both web-based products, and you'll see them in a second. I'm actually going to demonstrate Tableau calling a business objects document. So I have a Tableau visualization that provides some hyperlink capabilities out to a business objects document providing context. We'll see a demo of that in a minute. And then I've gone a little step further and actually have embedded a business objects document inside a Tableau visualization. So they literally appear in the same screen. And when I do some interactivity with the business objects document, it will in fact update, I'm sorry, do some interactivity with the Tableau viz, it will update the business objects document right in the same screen. And in essence, I've done the exact same thing with business objects. So I've got a crystal report that's calling a Tableau visualization in a separate uh, browser tab with context. And I have actually embedded a Tableau visualization inside a crystal report. And literally, as I interact with the crystal report, the Tableau visualization follows along. So it's a very, very powerful demo of some very tight integration. With no further ado, 
let's go ahead and have a look at it. So, of course, while I've been blathering here, all my sessions have expired. Let me log back into business objects here. So here is my BI Launchpad. I'm going to go to a folder where I've got some crystal reports that I created to do some integration. We'll have that displayed here. Now I'm going to probably have to come back in here and log in again. We'll see what happens again. But I've got two Tableau visualizations also showing up here in my browser. So I'm going to be using a whole lot of just tabbed browser navigation here in Chrome. And this is going to be, actually it's running on a Mac. Is my At this point I'm running my Chrome session on a Mac. As a side point, actually my two servers, my Crystal Server 2011 and my Tableau server, are both running on my Mac laptop up in my office under a Parallels Windows 7 VM. So it's a 64-bit Windows 7 uh, virtual machine running on a MacBook Pro, and it all works beautifully. So this stuff actually is, is, uh, um, is cross-platform compatible if I'm using a proper VM. For my web browser, it's simply Mac-based Chrome. And I have here a Tableau visualization for one example. I have another Tableau visualization for another example. And then I have my BI Launchpad with some crystal reports here. So we'll go ahead and kind of go one at a time through these examples I mentioned. To give you a little idea of Tableau, because again, I think the primary uh, audience here are SAP Business Object Shops, here is a Tableau dashboard showing in Chrome. And this gives you an idea of what uh, Tableau does and kind of where Tableau really shines. First of all, we see some geographically plotted data. And Tableau is beautiful with ge geographic data. It is so sweet. So I've got a dashboard here that shows a map at the top of my US unit sales. Uh, I'm seeing different pie charts, in essence, on different states showing me sales. Uh, and then broken down by uh, type of product. So if I hover my mouse over one of my pies, I see this is actually DeKalb, Illinois, uh, and I've got a bicycle class here, and then I've got an accessory class here showing my quantity sold. So to total quantity sold results in the size of the pie. Lots of products sold, big pies. So 311 bicycles and 316 accessories in DeKalb. If I come over to Oregon here, I go to, to uh, oh, geez, to Latin. 87 bicycles, uh, 83 accessories. Here in Nampa, Idaho, 156 bicycles and 162 accessories. So right away, I'm seeing some of the interactivity of Tableau with the ability to simply hover over a map point and see what is being um, visualized here. I also have the ability to click and filter. So by clicking now on Des Moines, Iowa, and accessories, I have now taken my product over time uh, line chart here and my product type contribution to total the Pareto chart here in the lower right and filtered those based on what I've clicked up here. So this has nothing to do with business objects integration, but it is an example of Tableau and the great interactivity and power of Tableau on the web. So here's where we're going to get a little bit of interactivity with business objects in place. If I now come down to my Pareto chart in the lower, lower right, which is currently for all United States showing my product type high to low, so we've done more competition products than anything else. Next is mountain products, then helmets, and then hybrid. We're hitting our 80% right here in hybrid, so for our Pareto chart, 80% of our products are being sold in these four product categories, product types. So again, a Pareto chart, not something I'm aware of you can do in business objects. Right away, we see an advantage of Tableau here. But I'm going to show you another really, really cool feature here. If you notice, I happen to hover my mouse over a product type category. And I have a hyperlink that pops up here to let me click to see helmets by country drill down. So I'm going to click this hyperlink right here. It's going to launch a separate window or a separate tab in my web browser and show me a crystal report now breaking down my helmet sales by country. Notice helmets is the type of report that I'm seeing here. And I have all of my crystal report drill down category now. I've drilled down to USA and helmets, and I see individual orders. Here's the BI4 breadcrumb navigation. This is the new stuff that you may not be familiar with. You haven't seen BI4 yet. I'll go back to my main report, my breadcrumb navigation, drill down on another country. And so I see all of the capabilities of Crystal Reports interactivity that we've seen before. Here's the group tree. Let's go see how we sold helmets in Australia. Okay, here we go back to the main report, highlighted Australia, click to drill down. There are the two orders in Australia. So in essence, I pass the context from my Tableau Pareto chart over to a separate tab 
calling a crystal report, and all of the interactivity is here. Now, if I go back to my Blaze main dashboard here in Tableau, and I want to see the same type of report for gloves, I'm going to simply hover over that gloves bar. And again, I see my hyperlink come up on the tooltip, and I can just click to drill down on gloves by country which goes back to the tab that I was on before and has now refreshed the crystal report for gloves and I have all of the drill down capability again. So in essence what's happening is is that the Tableau dashboard has a direct call to a business objects document. It could be any business objects document that the open document call supports, web intelligence, uh, a, a, a dashboard, a crystal report, and I need merely click the hyperlink and I can now look at locks in the Crystal Report in a separate tab. So this is an example of Tableau doing what I'm saying, calling another business objects document simply in a separate tab. So I now have my Tableau dashboard here, my business objects document that was called by Tableau here, and I can simply go back and forth between the tabs and use the different products. So that's an example of Tableau calling a business objects document with a hyperlink. Let's go to the second example from Tableau calling a business objects document using what we call an embed. So I'm going to come over here to another business objects dashboard. In this case, I'm using my geography again. Here's where I may need to log into business objects again if the session expired. But I have, again, now international sales average dollars. And I see the world kind of represented here, again, by different marks, each mark representing a different country. And I can, again, see some interactivity here. Bermuda's average sale was $5,880. It's a bigger circle with a different color in that a dark blue shows a very high average sale. So here's a real dark blue on Greece with an average order of $8,000. Now my United States where I have a large number of orders although there's a large number of orders, the average order isn't that much, $2,300. So I have a little bit smaller circle. And then I have some real small dark circles indicating a very small average. In Pakistan, our average order was $313. So the marks and the colors on the Tableau map indicate the average order, both the color and the size. Now, if I look at the bottom of my dashboard, I actually have below my Tableau visualization, another crystal report initially showing me country sales detail by year. So I have 2010, 2011, 2012, and I have all the drill down capability that I would normally have. If I drill down, it's going to ask me for a country because I've got a little context I've lost here. Let's try one more time. So there's 2012 orders for the USA. I can come back to the main report, drill down and see 2011 orders for the USA. Notice my USA list up here and so forth. So that is, again, a crystal report, all the interactivity there, the drill down is there. But check out the integration. I'm going to go back to, oh, let's pick Canada, for example. I'm going to come back to my Tableau visualization and hover my mouse over that mark for Canada. And once again, a tooltip pops up with a hyperlink. And if I click for Canada year by year detail, Literally, it's going to redraw my report below in the same browser window, and I now have country sales detail for Canada. And I can drill down on 2012 and see individual orders for Canada in 2012. Using my breadcrumb, go back to my year totals, drill down on 2010 orders for Canada, and so forth. So again, I have now refreshed and redrawn a business objects document below based on some particular interactivity up here in Tableau. So let's go pick a different area here. How about Argentina? I'm going to click for Argentina date detail by year. It refreshes the crystal report down here. Notice up here my average sale is 1665 and sure enough I come down here. I only had one order in Argentina in 2011 for $1665. Drill down and there is the individual detail for that order. So once again, I see the business objects capability of much more reporting detail and that kind of enterprise reporting standard that we've seen from business objects, but I'm seeing the very, really rich visualization of Tableau driving it. Let's pop back up on our map and click for Sweden by year detail and see what we get. Okay, so our average Sweden order, uh, I don't know where Sweden went, it's up here somewhere. 
There we go. So average $2,417 was the average order for Sweden. But back down here now in my crystal report, overall 22 orders, total sales of $49,000. And I can look at individual 2010 orders, use my breadcrumb again, individual 2011 orders, breadcrumb or group tree, and look at individual 2012 orders. So we have complete interactivity here in the traditional business object sense, along with the interactivity of Tableau, the visualization capabilities of Tableau, and they're tying together very, very nicely. So we've seen two of the four integration scenarios so far. We have seen Tableau calling a business objects document and putting it into a separate browser tab. And we've also seen Tableau integrating a business objects document in the same browser window and controlling it directly as we navigate up top. So that's Tableau calling business objects. Let's see the other way around now. I'm now going to come over to BI Launchpad. Two of the reports here in this Tableau integration folder were the reports being called by Tableau. This was being called by Tableau. This was being called by Tableau. And now I have two other reports that are going to call Tableau themselves. So I'm going to launch the product type year analysis report first of all. And that simply runs a report which is breaking down by year product type, and here is all of my crystal reports, analytic uh, capabilities, navigation capabilities. Here's the group tree, navigate around in the group tree, drill down, breadcrumb navigation, all the same crystal reports and business objects interactivity that we see. So here we see a traditional business objects document. But look at this. I have three years here. And I happen to hover my mouse over the year and get a little tool tip that, uh, that prompts me to click to analyze by type rep month. So I'm going to click this. And sure enough, as we saw before, it launches a separate tab in my browser to a Tableau visualization. This particular type of visualization is known as a heat map. Not aware of any way of doing a heat map in business objects. So right away, we have another advantage of Tableau visualization. Now, what I'm seeing here with a heat map, a heat map is a way of visualizing a very large matrix of data that might be tad amount or, or, or comparable to either a fairly large web intelligence document or in Crystal Reports, maybe a very, very big cross tab that would show a large number of rows and columns of numbers. Sound familiar? Maybe like a spreadsheet. But the idea is we visualize rather than seeing the number. So right away, I can see here that in this particular case, for 2010, the context was passed. We only had sales in February of 2010 and December of 2010. So no, no business was done at all between March and November. There could be some data issues there. But I'm now seeing by product type, and by salesperson, I'm seeing visual representations of my sales. And right away, who did really well in December and for what type of product? I can see a big blue block right here. And if I pop my mouse over there, that's Nancy DeVolio Competition Products, December 2010. She did $92,000 in business. Now, that compares uh, you know, quite a bit to her mark here in February of 2010, where she did 2,699 business. Now, who did the most business for us in February? I don't know. If we take a look here, I see a fairly big block here for Michael Siyama for competition. Hover my mouse over there. Did 15,968 in sales in February of 2010. So again, I'm seeing interactivity here, the ability to hover over a mark and get more details about the month, product type, sales rep, and then those dollars. But I'm seeing at a very top level a heat map letting me get a very quick idea of where sales are. A little bit here, a whole lot here, not a whole lot here. So that's the benefit of the visualization. Now I'm going to close that tab. Let's go back to the Crystal Report that called in and click on another year, so 2011. Sure enough, I go to a separate tab. Here is the Tableau heat map now for 2011. The context got passed. And now we have sales for all 12 months. So now the heat map becomes a much more meaningful visualization because I'm literally plotting here I don't know how many numbers, but I've got 12 columns and one row for each combination of product type and salesperson. If this was a cross tab with numbers in it, I would, have, uh, would be very hard pressed to draw conclusions or really figure out what's going on. But the idea of the heat map is, here are my big numbers right there. There in July 2011 for competition, Suyama sold 110 grand in, in uh, product. Not bad. Really good here too. Margaret Peacock competition for June 2011, $100,000. 
Look right down here, kids' bikes, not that much stuff sold at all. No particularly good months for kids, a few locks. Primarily competition bikes are our big sellers, really big here in the summer months of June and July. Do you see the conclusions we can draw just from a quick overview? That's the benefit of a heat map. That's the benefit of Tableau, and I'm calling it from business objects. So I'm going to close up the heat map for 2011. Let's get an idea of how things looked for 2012. We'll click here. Here's my heat map for 2012. Only a little bit of data in our data mart so far for 2012 from January through May. And right again, look at this in February in these competition bikes. Really good competition bike sales in February. Not bad for helmets in February. Here's some numbers. $24,000 Robert King did for helmets in February. So again, the heat map gives, giving us this really nice kind of visual overview and letting us then look by hovering at the individual numbers. If we want to come back and see more of the traditional enterprise drill down report, here we are. We can drill down. There are the individual orders that made up those mountain numbers in 2011. So what we're seeing here now is an example of business objects calling a Tableau visualization in a separate tab. And we see the combination of the traditional business objects document and that great visual analytics capability of Tableau. All right, I'm going to go open another business objects document. The last one here is going to be doing what we call an embedded Tableau visualization. I'm going to double click to run this report. And what I'm going to see here now is a standard traditional crystal report, again, with all the drill down capabilities. So I'm now looking at individual sales years. Within individual sales years, my sales reps, their quantity totals and sales totals. And if I want to drill down, here is the drill down capability. There's Robert King's individual orders for 2010. Here's my breadcrumb navigation. Come back to the main report. Here's Michael Suyama's individual orders for 2011. So all of that drill down capability and rich detail capability of a traditional business objects environment. But let's go back to the main report and take a peek down here. If I scroll this page down a bit, we see at the bottom of the page a very, very, very powerful visualization. If you saw my uh, session in Orlando, you saw me rail a little bit, a bit against gauges and talk about gauges and some of the gauge weaknesses. And if you're a Stephen Few follower, you know that his preferred visualization to replace a gauge is something called a bullet chart. Bullet charts are really hard to do in business objects. Uh, there was one session in Orlando where a bullet chart was done by layering three or four chart objects on the top of each other and kind of creating a pseudo bullet chart. It worked, but it was a tremendous amount of effort. Whereas this bullet chart in Tableau literally is about three or four clicks using something called Show Me. So, hey, how's the, how do I have this bullet chart that you can't do in business objects in business objects? Well, it so happens that I've literally embedded at the bottom of my crystal report a Tableau bullet chart. And bullet charts are great because they let me do a real quick kind of analysis of, first of all, overall sales. I'm sorting in descending order. Oh, hey, look at this interactivity here. Let's change our sort. I'm now sorting low to high in sales. I'm going to click this icon again and turn my sort off. Now I'm sorting alphabetical by salesperson name. Oh, let's click again and sort high to low. So I can now see my best salesperson for 2010 was Nancy DeVolio. My least productive salesperson, at least in terms of dollars, for 2010 was Robert King. But I'm actually plotting on this bullet chart in addition to the actual sales, sales goals using reference lines here. So for 2010, Nancy DeVolio's quota was 37.5. She did 71.863. As, as they like to say in the sales meetings, she knocked it out of the park. Now, Michael Sayama's goal for 2010 was 60,000. He only did 54.804, so he was close, but he didn't quite make it. Here we're real close, just made it. Janet Leverling's goal was 43.5. She did 44.1, so she just made it. So we can kind of see now in this bullet chart a whole lot of things in one small visualization. We can see actual sales. We can see how the quotas compare to each other with the reference lines. We can see which reps made goal and which ones didn't. If they made goal, they have a blue bar. If they didn't, they have an orange bar. It's a very, very easy to understand quick visualization that lets us compare actual sales to goal in a very small space. It's really far more effective than gauges. This is a Tableau visualization. Well, by default, it's showing me 2010. 
How did our sales folks do in 2011? No problem. I'm going to come up here in my crystal report and just click on this year 2011. And right away in my embedded visualization, this Tableau visualization is refreshed for 2011. A lot closer in sales. And Doddsworth number one, Robert King two, Margaret Peacock finish, finishing last in 2011. But see how much closer they are to each other? Right away I can see those bars and see how actual sales was a lot closer in 2011. Two people didn't make goal in 2011. Michael Sayama was quite a far, quite a bit under. And then what's with this Margaret Peacock goal here of, of 637 grand? I mean, right away I'm seeing these goal reference lines, and why is she so much higher here? So we can again see how things are comparing in 2011 using that bullet chart, and I refreshed it just by clicking up here in this crystal report. How'd they do in 2012? Ooh. So far, we got some work to do. Only one rep making goals so far in 2012. All the rest have some work to do. So we have a combination of the tried and true business objects. Here's the drill down, all the navigation, the group tree that we have come to know and love over the years. But right at the bottom of my main report is that beautiful Tableau bullet chart that lets me do a quick analysis of salespeople, how they compare to each other, how they compare to their goals, how their goals compare to each other. And literally by simply clicking in the crystal report, that embedded Tableau visual visualization changes on the fly. So what I have now is an embedded Tableau visualization right within a business objects document, and it's being updated interactively based on things that I do here. And by the way, the Tableau visualization full interactivity is here. Hover the mouse, look at the numbers, change the sorting on the fly. All of it is here in one place for you. So you've seen four examples of very, very nice tight integration. Tableau calling a business objects document. Tableau embedding a business objects document, business objects calling a Tableau visualization, and business objects embedding a Tableau visualization. Really, really powerful stuff. Best of breed business intelligence, tightly integrated BI, each being used for its own particular strengths. This is a beautiful combination of features. So let's wrap this up. The techniques used really quickly, just an overall uh, discussion of techniques. If you want more details, you got our number. But Tableau is uh, using URL actions. So the feature in the Tableau visualizations and the Tableau dashboards are URL actions, calling SAP Business Objects open document calls with parameters being added on and various other features of open document. In terms of getting business objects to call Tableau, I was doing, in particular in this case, pass through HTML to, in one case, do hyperlinks to a separate document, which was bringing up that Tableau viz in the separate tab. And the embedding was pretty cool. That was literally creating an iframe within a crystal report, placing the Tableau document within the iframe, and then refreshing the iframe with hyperlinks via pass through HTML. So very, very powerful stuff. Really, really nice tight integration. So next steps. Obviously, we've had some experience with this. We can make these two tool sets work very, very well. I want to concentrate on the Tableau piece here because, again, the, the, the understanding is, I think, is that the vast majority of us this morning are standard business object shops. We resell Tableau desktop, Tableau server. We provide Tableau training. We design these types of Tableau dashboards uh, as a con as a, on a consulting agreement or consulting uh, process. And you've seen the custom integration. We'll take the two tools and tie them together. Give us a call at 800-773-3472. Shoot us an email, info at ablazegroup.com, and we'll get these questions answered for you and just tell you all about this great, exciting stuff I've shown you today. So I think that takes care of the formal presentation. What I want to do now is catch questions. I'm going to come back to my panel here and see how many questions I have. i got a few here. Uh, as usual, we've got some issues with some of the, um, well, someone was hearing music. That was before we started the presentation, so I think you probably are hearing things now fine. Does this work with BOXI 3.1? After about eight things, I finally got a question. So does it work with BOIX or BOXI 3.1? And the answer is yes, it does. Open document works with BOXI 3.1. Uh, and then all of the features that you've seen are not necessarily you know, version dependent. So yes, it will work fine with XI 3.1 and even earlier versions. 
Is there integration with Webby as well as Crystal Reports? The answer is yes, there is. I just happen to have a Crystal server system, so I was showing you Crystal Reports. But pretty much all of these capabilities are available in Web Intelligence. The embedding may require a little bit of tweaking uh, because I'm not sure what Web Intelligence pure HTML capabilities are. That would require a little bit of extra work at some point in time. But you have lots of options in terms of iframes and having a Tableau session in one iframe and a business object session in the other iframe and, and then have them call each other. So you've got good capabilities with Webby as well. Uh, next question was the same thing. Webby, the answer is yes. Can Tableau pass parameters via the open doc call? Yes, it can. And you saw an example of that. Will open doc work with XI31? Yes. Uh, is Tableau using BO as its data source? Well, Tableau in this case, I want to use the same data source between systems. So I actually took the good old extreme database that we've used for uh, way too long. Changed the date so they were showing 2000. Uh, 10, 2011, and 2012, and happened to use those as the data sources for both my Tableau and Crystal Reports um, documents, but it doesn't make any difference. Tableau is completely data source agnostic. Pick your data source, SQL Server, Excel, Access, Oracle, Teradata, HANA, pick it, and Tableau works with it, so that doesn't make any difference. It's completely data source agnostic. Does Tableau do date time line graphing? I think that's what I showed. If we, if we go look back here at one of our dashboards, right there, there is a time over year. And date time features in Tableau are incredibly powerful. So it can do beautiful, beautiful date time types of graphics if I got that question uh, interpreted correctly. Uh, integrating business objects universes as a data source in Tableau. Uh, that's not the first time that's been asked. Uh, and at this point, I do not believe there is a way of using a universe as a Tableau data source. Now, whatever the underlying data source is within the universe, yes, but the universe itself, no, not at this point. Um, can it be accomplished on an iPad? Absolutely. So in essence, everything I'm looking at here is you know, in a web browser. So if I was on an iPad, I would see this. Um, some things might not work so beautifully on the iPad from the business object side. Again, Tableau servers fully HTML5 compliant, so this would look beautiful in an iPad. In terms of all of the business object stuff within the iPad, though, that might be an issue. So I would say at this point that is with reservations possible. Uh, heat maps in Webby, okay, it's something I wasn't aware of. Um, all right. Uh, all the same capabilities with web intelligence. Yes. I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to repeat these questions anymore. Uh, not if they've, if they've already been asked. Okay. Um, okay. A follow-up on the date timeline question is in reference to a milestone for tasks completed on a process. I don't understand that question. Um, catch us offline with that. We'll see if we can get that answered. Uh, all four ways in Webby. You know, guys, if I had Webby, I'd show it. I just had Crystal Server here. Again, I think some of the, particularly the embedding feature of Webby might be something that would require a little bit of extra work. So that is the particular piece that I think would be a little more involved to accomplish. Hyperlinking to a separate document from Webby, absolutely no problem. Uh, I think I answered the question how I was embedding. I think that was answered. If you still need some questions answered on that, get to a hold of us offline. Uh, mobile. So the question is, what happens when you try and view this through the SAP mobile app? Well, in the first place, at least from a Crystal Reports perspective, SAP mobile is showing Crystal Reports as PDFs. In terms of Webby, there will be actual Webby content with hyperlinks. Uh, that might require a little bit more work in that the SAP mobile app is, in essence, repackaging SAP content in an actual app whereas Tableau is literally just showing up in Safari, for example, in an iPad using HTML5. So it's very possible that some of the hyperlink stuff would work beautifully in that case. We wouldn't necessarily have them all in Safari. So we would potentially have some stuff in the SAP mobile app, and then it would be hyperlinking out to Safari for some of the uh, Tableau stuff. So that's something we'll have to do a little bit more follow-up on and maybe do a second um, cast down the road that does a little bit more mobile piece of this. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, this, you know, I like this one. Someone says it's cool, but you don't need to do it. Everything you showed, you can accomplish with Tableau, and it will look better. And I, I simply disagree. In that, if you need to do more really 
brute force, huge standard corporate reporting, and all of the drill down, multiple levels of drill down, automatic report distribution, all of these features uh, that really business object shines at, that's not Tableau's lease on life, and they won't even admit to that being their lease on life. I simply disagree with that. Um, bullet charts available in Webby. Uh, again, you guys are catching me. I'm not being. I'm not a Webby expert here. So, uh, again, in Crystal Reports, a bullet chart was uh, kind of accomplished with layering three things on top of each other. Bullet charts may be something new in Webby for for Feature Pack Three. I'm just not familiar with it at this point. Uh, the question is, was this using Crystal Reports 2008? I happen to use Crystal Reports 2011, but it's not a Crystal Reports version specific feature, so it would have worked fine with 2008. Um, does the last one you showed work with Webby? I'm not sure what the last one is, but in essence, I think that was the integration. And again, Webby integration where I'm building an iframe in the actual Webby document is something I'm just not familiar with and not sure that that's something that's, that's fully supported. Um, okay. All right, licensing. So I think the question is the integrated views you show, do they require user licenses in each server? Yes, they do. So I'm actually using a Tableau server license for this and a business objects license for it. So yes, licensing is required for each product. Um, okay. Does Tableau support SQL Server Analysis Services? Yes, it does. Uh, if we most missed most of the webinar, future ones scheduled, not for this. It's being recorded, though. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Um, okay, I think I answered about integrating the data. So in essence, there were two separate. I'm using the same database for both my business objects and Tableau pieces, but they don't have to be. I could have one being a completely separate data source with different data than the other. And as long as there's some common field between them, I can link them and, and integrate them. So in this case, they were using the same data source, but they don't have to. Uh, Tableau, yeah, okay, so once again, Tableau and universes, not anything that I'm aware of in the near future. Uh, how do I get an iframe? I buy an HTML book, <laughs> not to, not to, to, uh, um, be, you know, um, flip about it, but an iframe is an HTML piece and you need to do some HTML coding to get that. Crystal reports based on BW. Yes, it will work with crystal reports based on BW. By the way, there is BW connectivity to Tableau as well. Uh, does Tableau take parameters and URLs to be passed? Yes, it does. That's how I'm putting sending context to Tableau. Uh, the data source we discussed already. Got lots of good questions. Questions about universes in Tableau already answered. Uh, lots of repeat questions here. Hang on a second. Web service as a data source. I assume in Tableau the question is, can I use a web service as a data source? Um, maybe they're supporting things like Google Analytics and stuff. So there's some, you know, uh, web service data source capabilities there. It would depend on which one you're using. Um, let's see this question: Scheduling a Crystal report with Tableau. Data is created. Tableau has to run an on-demand based on that data in CR. Don't understand that question. Apologies. Okay. Yeah, just a lot of kind of conversations here I'm not fully understanding. I'm just going to just take one more quick. Tableau versus ClickView. Take that offline. Okay, so I think the last question is how am I positioning Tableau with, to uh, visual intelligence? I don't know visual intelligence enough yet to know. I know that visual intelligence, I think, as I mentioned earlier in the webcast, is not really finished. Uh, at least initially, it was using HANA and Excel only as data sources, didn't have the full data source support. I simply have not seen visual intelligence enough yet to compare it to Tableau. It's certainly nowhere near Tableau today. I know that for sure. And then the one other thing I'll provide before we take a take a, the rest of the day off, well, no, we're not going to take the rest of the day off, but before we, we wrap up the uh, webcast is where we're going to be showing this video. If you didn't see all of it, you want to watch it again, you want to share it, it's going to be on our YouTube channel, fairly new for us, youtube.com slash ablazegroupbi. So that's where this will be. I will try to get it edited and posted into the YouTube channel over about the next 24 hours or so. Also, for everyone that attended the entire webcast, we'll draw for that um, gift card a little bit later today and send you out an email if you were the lucky person to catch that um, that gift card. So that, I think, takes care of the questions. I think it takes care of the webcast for the morning. 
I appreciate your time. I appreciate you um, giving us the good questions. And let's see if there's anything else. I don't think so. I think that's about it. So if you'd like to know more about the products, know more about the uh, techniques we use to do that, want to consider uh, Tableau for use in your organization, give us a call, 800-773-3472, or shoot us an email, info at ablazegroup.com. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning. Hope to hear from you soon, and have a very, very good day.